What the? Hi, how's it going? Welcome back to Family and Fit, where we talk fitness and how to integrate in your busy lifestyle. So, today we're going to be talking about weight fluctuation and why you shouldn't worry about what the scale says. What you just seen right there was me weighing myself in for the day, and I guess I'm just going to like walk around. Uh, but yeah, what you seen on the scale was me weighing in at 156. Uh, and the crazy thing is, is, literally a couple months ago, I was at 142. So, uh, I've talked about this a couple times on the channel, and I think it's a very important topic to talk about, but it's not something that is, it's something that I think a lot of people make a big deal of whenever it's really not that big of a deal. Uh, a lot of people are, oh, close the door. Praise the barn. <laughs> but, back to it. So, I think a lot of people just make too big of a deal of what the scale number says. The scale number is always going to be uh, fluctuating up and down. The, the, the issue with using the scale as your only means of measurement for progress in the, in, with your fitness is that there's so many variables that fluctuate your weight, which is what you're using to measure, obviously. You're using your weight as, as a tool of measurement, and you're using weight as a means of measurement, yet there's so many things that go into it as far as what the scale is doing. You're, you could be gaining muscle, you could be gaining fat, you could be gaining water. Uh, and that's a lot, a lot of the reason why you're having so much fluctuation. And the reason why that this is like this number that I just popped up on is uh, such a big thing is because I've already had my big jump in weight where I jumped up from like 142 to about 146. So I had like a four pound jump or so. You generally have one of those when you go from a cut to a bulk. My weight pretty much hit from the 142 to 146 and I stuck around 146, 148 and I just kept bouncing around 146, 148, 146, 148. And then one day it's like I jump on the scale and I weigh in at like 152. Then I'm jumping on the scale and I'm bouncing back and forth between 150 and 152. And I'm just keep bouncing back and forth, keep bouncing back and forth. You know, it's been about a course of a couple months now. And I've, I've gotten to the point where now my weight's been at about 153, 152. And it's been staying right there, 153, 152, right in that area. Uh, maybe 151 somewhere. So about two pound fluctuation. I came home from work today and I jumped on the scale and I seen that 156. That's the heaviest I've weighed in probably over, I don't know, a year or so. Now, if you go back and you watch my theory series video that I just posted on uh, making progress very immediately and very quickly from going from a cut to a bulk, I think it was like cut to bulk gains or something like that is the name of the video. I kind of dive into how I think you can make steroid like gains pretty much immediately just due to the fact that your body was so nutrient deprived and, and, and but you were giving your, your muscles the stimuli to grow so as soon as they had the nutrients and the calories to grow they, they started to explode. That's one of the small things with, with why I think my weight jumped up as quick as it did. Now that right there is going to be 100% the smallest thing to, to have occurred just because no matter what even if you were on steroids, even if all the circumstances were right, there's no way you're going to be gaining like a pound of muscle in a week. Uh, you're probably doing good to get a quarter pound of muscle, if that. I mean, that that's really good. If you're getting a quarter pound of muscle a week, that's like, uh, what, in a month you're gaining a pound? A pound a, a month? 12 months? That's 12 months? That's 12 pounds a year? That's some ridiculous gains right there. So yeah, you should... You know, lean lean muscle mass that you're gaining should only be 0 .025. And so the biggest caveat and the biggest thing that's probably happening is water weight. Water weight pretty much always tends to be caused from two things. The amount of sodium that you're taking in and the amount of water that you're taking in. Like three things. And the amount of exercise that you're putting in because when you're sweating and whatnot, or just overall sweating, okay? So whenever you sweat, you're pouring out some of that water too. So there could be a matter of a combination of things. So Let's say, for instance, I'll give you all an example of what could have occurred. So maybe over the course of the past three weeks, my water weight has been going down and down and down and down. And essentially my water weight is it's just go, cutting off by like a pound, a pound, a pound, a pound. And then let's say, for instance, over, the three, over these three weeks, I've gained a quarter pound of muscle each week. So that put me up at three quarters of a pound. And I'm also weighing in on an empty stomach or it's been a few hours since I had eaten. So this is kind of playing into the fact of all these variables that, that can occur. So then today, whenever I consumed uh, maybe a crap ton of sodium, I drank a bunch of water, I drank protein shakes, I probably ate more calories uh, at this time of the day than I've eaten any other time. Just because I pack more into my breakfast and lunch uh, calorie-wise than I generally do, normally I'd have 
quite a bit more calories left for the last meal of the day, probably somewhere around 1,000 calories or so, at least 750. Uh, whereas today I only have probably like 500 calories left from my last meal. I've already consumed about 2,000 calories. Maybe I may have 750 calories left. <clears throat> but point being is that I've consumed a lot of food. I had a lot of hot sauce and a lot of uh, prepackaged foods today. So therefore, it's going to cause me to be retaining a lot more water due to the sodium levels that I have consumed. I have consumed way more calories than I have at this time of the day. I also generally do not weigh in at this time of the day. I consumed probably more water and I definitely consumed a crap ton of sodium. So there's four variables alone right there that are going to can easily cause a fluctuation in weight and why I'm seeing this this huge progress or huge jump in weight. Another thing I can say too is that I've actually retained quite a bit of this water weight in my muscles because I can just tell by like whenever you get abs and get to that point where you're a little bit lean, uh, you can start to see different definitions, different definition lines in your body and those definition lines will be a telltale sign of uh, if you're gaining fat or if you're gaining water and if you're gaining water uh, in your fat cells or your muscle cells or where you're actually gaining this, you can tell by if like if lines start to disappear, then you know it's probably gonna, it's probably some of it's from fat or you're re or you're retaining water in your fat versus storing the water in your muscles. Now you could even easily have a mix of both though. You could be storing water in your muscles and also in your in your fat as well, and it could be a 50/50 ratio. It could be any ratio pretty much that you could think of. It's probably not likely, but it is possible. So let me get back to the true purpose of why I wanted to make this video today because uh, the main thing is is like I don't want people to jump on the scale. I want people to ignore the number when they jump on the scale. I want people to want to jump on the scale. There's a lot of people say, oh, don't jump on the scale very often. Don't jump on the scale very often. No, I think you should jump on the scale every day, three times a day, and just don't worry about what that number says. That's the biggest thing is don't worry about the number. Screw that number. That number means nothing. You know, especially if you're weightlifting, like you could easily be losing fat almost as fast as you gain muscle within your first three months, six, six months of working out. Especially if you're just a genetically elite person. There's some people out there that are just genetically elite. Like my buddy, he hasn't worked out in, in like five years and he can lift almost as much as I can. My sister's brother, he's freak, he never works out. He can throw up like 300 pounds on a bench press like that. Hasn't worked out since high school. And then you have, and then you have somebody like me who's like absolutely not genetically elite at all that has been working out for two years and I'm still only throwing up 345. <clears throat> and you know, sometimes that stuff's discouraging. Sometimes it's like, man, why do I, why, why do I even have a fitness YouTube channel? Like, your, your, your gains are pathetic, man. And, but then I realized that's exactly why I do this YouTube channel, is to help people who are discouraged and to give tips to people who just are getting, are beating themselves up with fitness and just making things just so much more simple and just, helping people just not stress about it and making it an enjoyable process because one of the things that makes me so sick about the fitness industry is they try to make it rocket science I would I would say like almost half the people in the fitness industry just try to make things way too complex and they try to make it like you like you just have to do this certain exercises or you have to do things in a certain order you have to have perfect form and just all these extra things that like they're important they're very important especially with form so you don't injure yourself but if you're performing a lift, you feel that you feel it burning in the muscles you want it to burn in, and you're not injuring yourself. Like, don't worry about what anybody else is saying. Uh, you know, it's like just keep things simple, keep things easy, and just and just love the process, enjoy the process. Uh, sorry, I'm getting off on a side tangent and a rant, but that's kind of like what this video is about. It's just it's about you know not worrying about what the number is. Don't make it so difficult that that number has to go down every day. Don't stress yourself out so that if you don't see progress in a few days or if you're weight number actually jumps up that you're gonna freak out about it like oh my gosh why am I even going through all this hard work I should just give up Cause let, me, let me tell you something the, the the biggest thing of people who are successful in anything they do is striving through parts where they want to give up striving through and just telling yourself you can do it just trusting the process it's all about trusting the process enjoying the process and loving the process like that's like what probably the biggest tip I can give to any aspect of life uh, just just trust the process love the process and everything else will play out and just and just never give up ignore that scale number don't let it bother you if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you don't please don't give it a thumbs down and screw it just do whatever you want but if you want to see more content like this and you want to get notifications whenever we post videos hit that subular button and that notification bell next to it I really enjoy everybody who watches our channel uh, I'm super ecstatic I want to give a shout out and a thank you to 
all the people that are following us. A lot of people, are, a lot more people are following us on Facebook. You know, I was a guy that had like nobody. Like, I'd post a picture and they'd get like one like, and it'd be like my mom or something. And now I'm posting things, and within like I don't know a couple hours, I'm having like 40, 50, 60 likes on stuff, and it's just like uh, of some photo of like me and my brother working out. Like, it's just. It's just it's super awesome, guys, and I really appreciate it. And it's just seeing the channel grow and seeing the whole uh, influence grow and people inspiring people. I started to get so many more people like just getting in my inbox and just messaging me saying, "I love your content. And I love watching your videos." And basically, that I'm an inspiration to them, not only in fitness, but just the fact that I'm chasing my dreams and my goals and I'm not giving up. Like they're just the time aspect of me doing this now that I've been doing it for a year and I still haven't given up. Like people are really starting to respect that fact and. Uh, you know, if that's something that you respect out of what I've done, make sure you're hitting the subular button because uh, it is a struggle. It is discouraging sometimes, but you got to keep pushing through it. I'm going to keep pushing through it. I'm not giving up on you guys. I'm going to be here every Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, uh, and I'm going to try to be posting even more frequently. I'm going to try to do like five-minute videos and try to do them more daily so that way I can just sign in with you guys and, and just see what's up. Y'all can see what's going on in my life, and uh, I'll just I'll have a place where y'all can interact with me in the comments and we can just be part of Team Family and Fit and just keep doing this thing. I'll catch you on the next one.